Hi, this is Paula Jai, um, running Cybersecurity Talk, and I got uh, with me today Shannon Lins. Nice Hi. to see you, yes. Nice Thank you for you. having me. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, you guys need to hear about Shannon because there's like so many nice things uh, about you. Uh, first of all, you are a director of Dec DevSecOps at uh, Intuit. Yes. And you're also running a red team, right? Yep, I run the red team as well. Do you have a lot of challenges with that? Absolutely, it's like managing tigers and not getting eaten by them. <laughs> oh yeah, managing tigers is a good co good comparison. And um, yeah, that's that's uh, interesting. And you've been also uh, nominated with, and you won uh, different types of awards within the security, yeah? Yeah, I, run, I won the uh, Scott Cook uh, Innovation Award at yeah. Intuit. And uh, that was for cloud security. Uh -huh. So um, we basically figured out how to take sensitive data workloads into the cloud mm -hmm. and make them secure oh. when at the time you know a lot of the cloud platforms just didn't have a lot of security features in them so it's kind of a cool capability yeah. awesome awesome and uh, what about what about so you in general see a lot of different types of companies because you have a chance to cooperate with fortune 500 different types of companies yeah. like banks for example yep very large so banks governments you name it how would you evaluate um, security awareness in such big organizations? Because everybody would expect that it's like very high because we mm -hmm. all know big brands and so on. But how, how do you see that? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. It depends on the maturity of the organizations. Um, I actually tend to believe that many try very hard to build up their security capabilities. There's rigorous programs and frameworks. But when it comes down to it, you know, our red teams are able to do things that the framework Frameworks don't necessarily cover, mm -hmm. and so there's still an exposure that has to be part of how you bring your security program together. Mm -hmm. Is understanding attackers and adversaries and bringing that information into the fold. And so I would say that from a maturity standpoint, um, majority of the programs out there are still sort of advancing at the time when attackers have truly got an mm. upper leg. Okay, and uh, like, what, what about the leaders over there? So if someone is like managing security, what kind of challenges this person has within their team? Yeah, you know, managing really have the challenge of taking frameworks and making them useful, useful against attackers. Um, when it comes down to it, those frameworks help us raise the minimum bar. Things mm -hmm. like PCI, DSS have really done a great job of doing that. Mm -hmm. But truly, uh, adversaries and attackers have taken advantage of things like the cloud and other capabilities to be able to pivot and do more dynamic things. Mm -hmm. And so the bar really isn't enough when it comes to advancing your security capabilities. Okay. I think that a lot of managers do need to figure out how to pull those things together. Yeah, and uh, what we also notice is that uh, that particular manager needs to be placed in the organization correctly, right? That's absolutely true. When you place your management for security, uh, what we find is that there are different parts of the uh, environment where they will be more successful. Mm. And so really organizing around the work that's coming in, the uh -huh. right stakeholders, getting that information pulled together properly, mm -hmm. and having that stakeholder support is essential to being able to advance your security programs. Oh, okay, yeah. And and what about um, like b building security awareness uh, amongst employees? So what mm -hmm. kind of challenges do you usually see? Because people are quite resistant about, for example, inventing strong passwords. Yes, that's right. something that is quite difficult for them. It's, it's an easy case, but there there is much much more to convince them that security is important. What would you like? What kind of challenges right. do you see? You know, it's interesting because when you build security awareness programs, it tends to be that. Um, somebody will take that security awareness training, they do it for two hours mm -hmm. and then they're done for and the then year, it, that's right? It, exactly. And they're completely trained. But mm -hmm. um, what we find is that when you do red teaming and you do adversarial attacks and you mm -hmm. do simulations, fire drills and things like that, mm -hmm. you ultimately build up skills because the person is actually able to then apply the things that they learn. Mm -hmm. And so from an awareness standpoint, unless you're actually pushing on those skills, you're not ultimately building them. So you're not really creating the understanding of what the information is yeah. and then building upon it. Especially after like two hours video. And there's, exactly. there's no chance someone can like, working in the, especially in a corporation, consume it. consume it when there's like maybe not even a, like a super so nice feeling to the company that you are working with. Mm -hmm. Still people need to care about security. So yeah. it needs to be an ongoing program, right? Exactly. And it should be continuous and evolving constantly. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we're constantly 
currently working on is figuring out how to bring fire drills to bear. We do things mm -hmm. like Red Team Mondays. Mm -hmm. So on a Monday, we can fool or trick somebody into understanding what happened to them. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that means that you're raising the security bar constantly and you're pushing on the skills so that people can understand and develop further empathy for um, how hard it truly is to yeah. stay ahead of attackers. Oh, okay. And what about uh, your Red Team uh, recent research? Because yep. this is pretty amazing. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about it? Because yeah. this is news. Yes, this is coming. Yeah, yeah, this is good news. Um, so you know, from red team research perspective, one of the things that we really have been advancing on is things like uh, cloud DevOps and um, also just some of the IoT recent uh -huh. exposures. We have uh, a couple of people who are talking about a, a new Metasploit module to do account takeovers in the cloud. And what's interesting about that is, um, you know, you could inadvertently set up your account to be exposed and not necessarily know it. So we're constantly trying to build tools and capabilities that help um, developers who are leveraging things like cloud services or SaaS mm -hmm. services to understand the exposure and be able to test it more effectively. Yeah. So being able to contribute to open source out there um, has really helped us to to, uh, work within the community to really ultimately get red team information and metrics back. Mm -hmm. So the so the module is coming. Yes, the module has actually been checked into Metasploit, and uh, so we're really excited about it. Ah, yes, definitely. I will definitely need to check on it. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. That's cool. Um, okay, so so we will give you guys more information about the module um, after the interview. Yeah, yeah? absolutely. Uh, but uh, my. my female part speaks out <laughs> yeah and uh, well I have to ask you a question how is it for you to be a female in a security field how do you feel <laughs> it's, it's almost been a few decades now and uh, I would say at first it was pretty lonely mm -hmm. I remember when I first uh, started taking programming classes and I was one in a hundred men basically exactly. <laughs> sitting there um, and it was interesting because I could barely even get a lab partner to work with me because I was the girl in the room I would say that over the years I thought that would advance and change because there was more and more capabilities, there was more online education that started to evoke. And then just recently I was pretty surprised I went to a recent conference in Las Vegas mm. and it, was, it had, uh, I think it was 30,000 people were there and then okay. 30,000 people there were less than 1% was female. And so that was really kind of devastating to me. Yeah. A cloud, you know, engagement like that, where this is the newest, hottest thing, and we yeah. can't attract female talent. I think that speaks to people like me who want to see more and more women really get exposed to Same this for environment. Me, yeah. There yeah. should be, there should be more of us. Yeah. So uh, on that note, you know, mm -hmm. getting more women to the field, I would say. So I'm a technical mm -hmm. female. I'm. I really do try to advance my skills constantly. I program. I do all these different exactly. things. Right. Yeah. And um, what's kind of cool about that is being able to red team, you have to have programming skills. And being able to work with other women and other mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. you have to be able to share with them. So I find that exciting. Yeah. I'm now founding a second foundation that's called Hacker Girl. Uh -huh. And the idea behind this is to really kind of raise that awareness about cybersecurity, that's a great idea. but also bring people like me to the table to be uh -huh. able to work with more women that are out there yeah. who are looking to advance their skills. I recently attracted a, um, a lady from Rochester Institute of Technology. She's mm. been coming and being an intern in my group the last oh, couple of years. That's great. She was, uh, she, she was a brand new freshman in college when she joined oh. my group as an intern, and okay. she keeps coming back year after year. Her hacker skills have advanced, and it's really been very cool to see her internships uh, produce somebody who's able to be both technical and be able to walk other people through those capabilities. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely see your point. But at the, that stage, um, well, you are probably not dealing with like the female problems anymore because you've got your brand and right. people know who you are. Mm -hmm. So there's like. There are no questions. Yes, you're gonna speak about what you know and so on. And, and the same story is for me. But uh, it's kind of funny, like when you when, when I do the pen test and I go to the customer side, when like someone invites us, probably one person from the crowd like knows me. Mm -hmm. But the other, like the team that is out there, not everybody needs to know you. Yep. So so they kind of like treat you like, oh, it's a girl. Probably she doesn't know. She doesn't anything. know so, anything. Yeah. Exactly. And basically. It's interesting because a lot of times, you know, you're hacking into something and mm. you're showing somebody how to do it. You're social engineering, and I find to be female and social engineering is kind of an interesting thing, right? I absolutely agree. With you it, get yeah. such an advantage from it when you're trying to run a test. It's, the simulations can go a lot better. There's a level of cuteness that we introduce. Exactly. Hey, hair. Right? <laughs> but that works. I'm sorry. <laughs> social engineering and progress. Yeah, and but at the same time, like you know, you sit me down in front of a computer and I can produce a lot of different things and outcomes. And I think that that's interesting, but I think ultimately there's just not enough um, role models out there for yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. We've earned our stripes the hard way. 
say, I would say, you know, a few decades in, earning your stripes was really, really tough. I took every job out there so that I could get skills and nobody really wanted to teach me. Yeah. Um, so I did it the hard way and I, I really would love to see it be a lot easier for the women today. What, what, could, what, in your opinion, are like the factors or the skills that a woman should have to succeed in cybersecurity? What do yeah. you think? So one of the major skills that I see that prevents people from being able to do things like red team or the more advanced capabilities is being able to program. Okay. So being able to develop code, be able to contribute to open source, be able to learn from a community and collaborate, mm -hmm. that's a real essential skill. Um, I have taken some folks that really didn't have coding skills. Now I'm not saying I got them to a really great level, but yeah. I got them to actually yeah. get pretty comfortable with coding mm -hmm. and the way that I did that was to introduce them to things like Code School and Pluralsight and mm, Linda okay. and some mm -hmm. of those things to get their confidence that they could develop mm -hmm. code. Mm -hmm. And I think the next thing in my mind you is... You should bring them to our academy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think the, the next thing in my mind is testing, right? You know, there's just not enough scanners and tools out there and um, what's interesting is that most people will run those scanners and tools, but they don't understand the fringes, they don't understand the attack cases and so we've done something to reduce the barrier to entry for things like threat modeling by mm -hmm. doing attack maps. Okay. Because what we found is that if you could articulate an attack map, you could actually start to understand and embrace the information that's coming out of programs and mm -hmm. environments so that you could make better adversarial decisions. Okay. So I think that that's really critical. And I think the uh -huh. last one is actually something that's really emerging in this uh -huh. space uh -huh. is machine learning. Yeah. Um, there's some really great capabilities out there. It's, I, a, it's a hot subject, yeah. It was. Right and yeah. you know, it's interesting because in November, I went to a one-day class uh -huh. on building a recommendation engine. Oh, that's cool. And I built a recommendation engine, and it's not all that hard, and no. it's pretty easy. There was a bunch of serverless capabilities, Lambda, a whole bunch of stuff in AWS that makes it easy mm -hmm. to do those things. And when you take training sets and you start to make decisions through computing technology, mm -hmm. you can easily start to adapt it for some of the more interesting testing scenarios for security. Okay, yeah, and, and what about the, like a young woman? So what would you recommend for, for those girls? Because like, they see it's a man's world. I mean, mm -hmm. no doubt, yeah. it is. So, so basically, uh, we want to change it. So uh, you, you do your amazing um, you program with the, with the uh, hacker girl. Mm -hmm. yeah? so, so this is, this is the uh, case. But th these girls need to hear about it. And then they need to see the value. But what else they need to know? Like, what is the push factor for them to jump into this field? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I have two little girls. So oh, you do? Yeah, oh, I, that's cool. I tend to be... Yeah. A mommy with a mission and a passion to make my girls be able to do the things do they that they do want to. Do programming already? Yeah. Um, oh, so my uh, my eldest daughter is taking programming classes through her school, Perfect. and the way that she's gotten exposed to it has been, you know, just through leveraging uh, computers to be able to learn uh -huh. has been a real nice feature. And mm -hmm. then in addition, they have things like programmable robots now, yeah. where you can Lego get. Mindstorm you, yeah, they guy. do. They have this great technology now. And so we exposed her to that. We made it so she built a robot. She could do it by herself, build confidence. And then the other thing that we exposed her to was being able to build her own stories mm -hmm. through PowerPoint. Uh -huh. So you can actually get your children to be able to build stories online and start mm -hmm. to understand and work with computers. Mm. And I think it's the beginning of confidence and the essential skills of building that capability that makes it um, so that they really do start to internalize, I can do this. I can do that and I'm not afraid to speak. I'm not afraid to speak about it I'm not afraid to learn a new skill I'm not afraid to teach hmm. I love the fact that you can have a child basically build a book online uh -huh. because that's actually the first beginnings of them teaching the things mm -hmm. that they're learning yeah so she draws a bunch of stuff and we digitize it and then she's able to kind of move it around on the screen that's and, cool. and then there's actually publishing capabilities what's uh -huh. great about that from my perspective is you know then she starts to want to do things like robots and she wants to build more capabilities it's fun. exactly yeah. and so we we have to find a way to make it fun. We have to find a way to build better skills and capabilities. But most importantly, and I think this is the most essential skill, is confidence. So, you know, what's interesting is um, if you build on the, the thought of children starting to build confidence and mm -hmm. getting those capabilities from a female perspective, there's a million cybersecurity jobs right now that are going unfilled. Yeah. And um, truly, those are opportunities for women to mm -hmm. be able to come into entry level positions, be able to fulfill fill on these capabilities and ultimately creates career path because yeah. as we get more and more women into the field There's we can actually needs, yeah. 
up level those jobs and uh, and I think there is serious need um, when I look out at things like Grace Hopper which I attended this year and spoke mm -hmm. at you know what was interesting to me and this was a lesson learned was that I realized that there wasn't a lot of exposure even in that forum mm -hmm. to what cybersecurity was oh, mm. and so um, I had a whole bunch of ladies that I got to talk to while I was there uh -huh. and they said I never even imagined cybersecurity could be something that I would be passionate about until I got to see this talk yeah. so I was super excited about seeing that come to bear but we just don't have a lot of forums for it. we don't have a no. lot of people pushing on it and that many jobs being available just tells me that this is such an opportunity that we should go after it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, on, on the other hand, companies need to understand to, uh, that there is a need to, for positions like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that, that's, that's basically why we are here, why we're talking about it. Because, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, there will be a need of, of different types of security jobs that they are like unfilled. So the career path, it's uh, just there, job is there. It's just that we need to jump on it and uh, educate ourselves and be the best. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And I think one of the more interesting challenges is that I think that women tend to believe they can't do something like this. If you look at all the STEM programs that are out there, the science, technology, engineering, and math, um, building up confidence is really the critical and essential element. And I don't know that we spend a tremendous amount of time building up that science mindset. Mm. And that's where I think we could really expose folks to understanding what it means to have a community around this. I, yeah. I mean, we got to meet and it was yeah. because we really do enjoy science and math and Absolutely. technology. And I think it's just a matter of really getting more vocal and looking for people like yourself to be mm. able to engage with. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately growing out around those folks, you know, new circles that can help to bring these um, initiatives to bear. Motivation. Exactly. And like the different types of news. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Anybody can do it. And yeah. that's the thing is what's interesting to me is that this is such a big problem and we really need more help and we need people to contribute and get involved. And everyone, you know, out there has a good incentive to do that. Like, as an example, if we don't actually fight off attackers, actually most of the technology that we use will be untrusted. Yeah. And a lot of the things that we're doing as, you know, a community may end up getting broken in the mindset of the next generation because it can't ultimately trust that technology. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big problem that we have to solve and we've got to start thinking about it now. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when we've got uh, DevOps and software is developed uh, with, with, with this, yeah, so the customers basically uh, should ask the question, where's the security? And here yeah. comes the DevSecOps, yeah? Exactly. So, you know, we're primarily trying to make security valuable instead of just being a cost center instead of making it invisible from the standpoint of attackers you know we're ultimately now trying to figure out how do we fight adversaries that are leveraging their information skills against software mm -hmm. that means that we want to do things like build up a developers capabilities have them understand what logs mean to them uh -huh. you know be able to track and trace against attackers and ultimately be able to make decisions about the logic that they have in their products so mm -hmm. that they can make those products safer if you think about that that includes Includes things like better authentication, MFA, um, adding in new identity mechanisms, and really advancing your technology so that it meets the purpose of a customer's needs, but ultimately helps them to make their information and access to things that are going to be able to do transactions for them mm. safer for them ultimately and online. So finally, security becomes a part of the business process. Exactly, and yeah, so you know, from out. my perspective, I'm super excited about this initiative because you're now seeing security be become part of the drivers that make a business successful mm -hmm. and that ultimately is something that is valuable because end users are now asking for more security. Yeah. Um, I actually think that, you know, as an end user, I'm constantly looking for features like MFA and some of those things to make me feel more comfortable that mm -hmm. I'm putting my information and trust in the right companies. Okay, so let's summarize. We have uh, had an exciting discussion. We've had a major exciting discussion. <laughs> Thanks so much for it's that. It's been great to meet you. Same, same, definitely. Uh, so just to summarize the subject, guys, uh, we've been talking about, um, well, first of all, the Metasploit module that you got, mm -hmm. the Red Team Challenges, Security Awareness, with uh, at the end a little bit of a female uh, factor uh -huh. uh, why um, being a woman it can be challenging in this in this field but on the other hand we are just we are doing very well we're uh, just emerging we're definitely and knowledge is everything it is yeah. and being able to share and collaborate is so essential finding new forums for folks like us to meet yeah, and exactly. really participate in, sh in spreading the message is really essential I think yeah okay so guys uh, 
If you are interested in the blog post, uh, make sure that you're gonna click on the link and that's gonna take you to more information about the Shannon's Metasploit module uh, that you definitely need to check out and more information also about uh, what we've been talking about, security awareness uh, and uh, stuff that is related with uh, Female Factor and your new program that you are starting, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks so much, bye. Thank you.